Many of you have asked me what setting do I tweak on my Mac when I set up a machine for Pro Workflow. Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I'll be doing this demo on my 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max processor. However, if you have a computer or a new Mac with a Mac OS Monterey, the process would be the same. A lot of the settings I'm about to share with you are my own personal preference, so you may not have to go through all of them, and if you don't like something, you certainly don't have to set it that way. There are certain things that I do definitely recommend that you go in and enable or disable, and I'll go over and share that with you. One thing that I wanted to point out when setting up a new Macintosh, the first thing is that it gives you the option to do either a system migration or a time machine restore. If you are a pro and you need any type of calibration and you have pro software running on your system, the recommendation is to start out with a fresh machine. This way it doesn't bring any of the binaries or any of the codes that are either from the Intel machine or the previous installation over to the new computer. And with that said, the best place to start out with all these preferences is to go and start with system preferences. If this was my personal account, what I would have done is sign into Apple ID already. However, this is a demo account, so I'm just gonna walk you through the overview of everything. Starting with the top at the general tab. Right now, my interface is in light mode. Personally, I prefer to use my computer in dark mode so that it reflects or emit less light into my eyes, so I prefer that much more. With regards to the accent color, right now we see at the very top that we're getting a lot of colors on the screen right now and those buttons. If you want to make it all gray out, you can come and choose graphite. And in fact, the darkness of the dark mode will go a little bit darker if you choose graphite. So this is an option that you can certainly choose to use. From here, I will go back and choose desktop and screensaver. Normally for my desktop, the default wallpaper are fine. However, I like to use in general, a solid dark color, something like that gray, so that it doesn't detract me from what I'm doing, especially if I'm working with an image or something like that. I want just to focus on what I'm really doing at the moment, especially if those apps are not in full screen. This way it helps minimize what's on the background. The next tab is screensaver. And right now the screensaver is set to come on after 20 minutes. I don't usually like the screensaver to come on, so I uncheck that. This is also going to be crucial if you do display calibration too. You want to disable screensaver because if your calibration takes a little bit longer, you want to make sure that the screensaver doesn't pop up right in the middle of calibration and you have to start the process all over again. Let's go back. Next up is dock and menu bar. So the dock, what I usually like to do is I like to set it to a smaller size and you can certainly go in and dynamically change this. However, you will notice that at some point it just really stopped going bigger or larger. And that is because it depends on how much icons you have in a dock. So personally for me, I like it a little bit smaller. In fact, I put it at the smallest and I enable magnification. So every time I move my mouse down there, it just dynamically magnifies it for me. And that is a cool feature that I like. But again, you do certainly don't have to use that. The other thing that I also like to do is check this box, minimize windows into application icon. So let me kind of give you the premise as to what may happen. I'll open the Safari tab and we'll open a few windows. We'll start with this too, my channel and also Apple website. So the moment I minimize Safari, and it doesn't really matter how much tab you have, and this will apply to any program other than Safari, but Safari is the easiest to do the demo. You will notice right away that the Safari itself minimized into this temporary area on my dock. If I bring it back up again or minimize it, it just hides in this temporary area. If I check minimize windows into application icon, watch what happens. I'll minimize these right now and they go right behind Safari icon itself. This kind of cleans up the dock so that you don't have all these things expanding all the time. For example, I just have the download and the trash at the moment. So you may wonder, how do I get the windows back? Well, certainly what you can do is click on it, but there may be another window. One thing that you can do is come at the very top on the menu and click on windows, then choose the other window. Another thing that you can certainly do is do a double tap or the equivalent of a right click. And because we have just set up a new machine, this is not enabled yet. So I'm gonna hold down the control key and then click on Safari. And you can click on show all windows to which it will show the active window and also 
any of the hidden windows. Again, this is a highly personal preference. You don't have to go in and set this, but I just like this because it definitely cleans out the way how the program minimize into the dock. You can certainly choose to use automatically hide and show dock. Personally, because I have my dock so small, I like it showing on the screen. So at least I know where is it at. And if I need something, I can do that very quickly. All right, let's head back to the main screen. And the next thing I want to touch on has to do with security and privacy. This is something that you may find every now and then your computer is giving some issues, particularly in the privacy tab. And let's scroll down all the way until we see full disk access. We have to unlock this first, so I will do that now. And you can see that there are certain apps in here right now that has full disk access. So my general rule of thumb is that if you're using any type of creative app, you could be pulling files from all over the place. And it's just a great idea to come in and add those apps in. For instance, right now, Photoshop is not in here. And if I launch Photoshop up and try to use it, it will ask me, do I have permission to access the desktop, the download folder, the user folder, and all these things. And I don't want it to ask me all those permissions. I just want to give it the permission so that if my files should be in this obscure location in the folder on my drive that doesn't have permission to, it doesn't show me a blank files or anything like that. So I'll click on the plus sign, go into the application folder, and what you would simply do is choose the program that you want to add in. For example, I'll add Photoshop. And the moment you do, you have that check mark right in front of Photoshop, guaranteeing that it has full disk access. I would recommend that you do this for all of your creative app that you're using. It's going to save you a lot of time. And one of the things that I found out is that in Final Cut Pro, sometimes it will ask for the permission, especially after it has update or on a new installation. However, sometimes that doesn't really work well. I have to quit the program, relaunch again, and is still showing the missing clip. This definitely does help solve that problem and also for compressor as well. Moving on to the next thing, which is going to be the trackpad. So right now I have my trackpad set to pretty fast. By default it's somewhere around here, which I find the mouse or the cursor moves a little bit too slow for my system. So I like to pull it up almost all the way. You can go in and adjust the speed, especially if you want something faster. This is something that I definitely recommend you change it to taste. Tap to click if you want to be able to just tap on something and click, definitely enable this option. It will definitely help. And also a secondary click with two fingers, that is equivalent to a right click, which comes in really handy. And I will show you that on Safari. So I can two finger tap on my mouse pad and now I can go to show windows like I've shown earlier. You can certainly go in and choose the different zoom, scroll, and also gesture settings. I'll leave those at default. I don't usually mind those so much. And the next thing what I would do from this point is display. So when you set up these new Liquid Retina XDR displays, it comes with a few options or any other Mac for that matter, especially the one with a built-in display. You have the option to adjust the brightness automatically to which if you're doing any type of professional color work, I would definitely recommend going and uncheck that right away. The next thing that I would also uncheck is True Tone because True Tone does not only affect the built-in display, it also affects any external display link up to the system too. And if you're doing display calibration, you definitely don't want that to change because right now I'm in consistent lighting. It's going to stay the same. However, it's still adjusting for the color of these lights. If I am in a room with natural light and lighting is changing, my screen color is going to change dynamically as the lighting is changing. And that's definitely something we don't want. Now on these new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro with the mini LED liquid retina XDR display, you have the option to go in and choose a different reference mode. The one nice thing about this is that if a user has already gone in and configure a reference mode on the system, I have another user account, which is my primary, you can see that the reference mode that that user has pre-programmed, it perpetuates throughout all the user modes in the system. So that's something that's really nice. You only need to set up once. This will work well for a school environment, for instance. So I can go in and choose photography, the 80 and the automatic adjust brightness and also the true tone is disabled, which is actually a good thing to have. But normally when I'm just really browsing around, for instance, I still like to see my image in correct color. So I usually disable automatic brightness and true tone. In the Apple XDR, you can certainly go in and change the display brightness. If you want to learn more about these mode and how to customize this for pro workflow, I have made an extensive guide on that. I'll leave a link to it up here. Next up on the list is the battery setting. This is the power management setting to the laptop. 
So I'll click on the battery tab and if you're running on Monterey, this will look very similar. If you have the previous version, you can kind of use this as a guide too. However, the interface will be slightly different. Right now, turn display off after is set to three minutes. This will not pass any calibration whatsoever because once you start calibrating in about three minutes time, the display will shut off. This is definitely not good. So even when I'm on plug in mode, for instance, on a laptop, I would still go into the battery mode when before I go in and calibrate the display and set this to maybe one hour. This way, if the power get disconnected for some reason, I know that if I'm in the middle of a calibration, it will continue without any issues. Slightly dim display while on battery power, I have that unchecked because for instance, if I lose power, my display will change in luminance and I don't want that to happen. So I want it to remain the same all the time. And this will also be crucial when you're calibrating your display too. Optimize view for streaming. I'll have that check. Optimize battery charging. All good. Show battery status in menu bar. Yeah, why not? And the energy mode, because I'm running on the 16 inch Mac version, I can choose the automatic low power, high power recommendation. It's just a set to automatic. The computer does a really good job balancing all these things out. Next up is power adapter and for power adapter right now, this is also set really low to three minutes. Usually I bring this up to about an hour and after an hour, the screen will go off, but it's just something to remember and keep in mind. I say prevent your Mac from sleeping when the display is off. So I will check that so that my Mac doesn't really try to go to sleep when the display is not really on. I have it on wake on network access and energy mode. I have this set to auto. And from that, this is pretty much all the main system preferences that I would tweak. Now, moving on, there's a few things that I would still change on the desktop and the way how things are showing and some of the information that I'm getting. So for instance, I'll start out with Finder and I'll go to Preferences. And with this, I can change a few things. For instance, Finder Preferences is really important. I would say show these items on the desktop. So I want to have the hard drive and connected server show. So I have a NAS link up to my system that I normally use. So when I have those drive link up, especially when I have, for example, um, removable media, SD card, CF cards, XQD, I want it to all to show on my desktop. So I see where things are. Another thing is when you click on Finder and create a new Finder window, it asks you where does it want it to show? For right now, it's set to recent, and I don't really like that. I don't use recent really much. I know a lot of people use that. Personally, I like this to show my desktop so that every time I click on a new finder window, it just goes to my desktop because that's kind of where my temporary storage is, not so much where the recent files are. However, if you prefer recent, you can do that. And if I go in and click on a finder window, you will notice that this is showing recent. But again, like I said, my personal preference is to choose desktop. Tags, I'm not going to really worry about this much. I usually just leave this at the default, but you can certainly go in and choose another color and create your own tag or rename the name for these tags too. And you can certainly do that as you can see right now. Sidebar, this is something that I care a lot about because I like my finder to show me a lot of information. Sometimes this can be too much. So do this sparingly and do this to what you think it's going to be useful for you. For instance, some of the things are not showing right now, such as movie, music, pictures, and also the home folder. I like to see the home folder so that if something is not showing up in here or if there is other folders inside my home folder, I can just click there and see everything in a heads up view and it's available to me. I also like to go in under location to say show MacBook Pro. The hard drive right now is on a dash, so I usually check that so that it shows all the hard drives that's linked up to the system, regardless external drive and everything. I just like to see everything pop up on the side so I can make the best decision how I want to move my files around. The nice thing about having the Apple MacBook Pro, and this is, you know, the laptop is called Apple right now because this is a temporary setup that I have. I'll reformat this after all the testing, but essentially it will say Arts MacBook Pro or your name, MacBook Pro. And if you click on here, you can go to the hard drive, but if you have other hard drive link up to the system, it will also show up in this window too. And that makes it very easy to access all of the files. And I'm pretty much check heavy, so you can do it like I do, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. And in the last tab advanced, you can have a show file name extension. I never find that useful, but what I do find useful in this tab is two things. Number one, remove item from trash after 30 days. If you're not really good with removing item from trash, I would definitely check this option so that after 30 days, if you're not gonna need that file, it would automatically go and delete it and clean it up for you. The next thing is when performing search, 
The default is to search this Mac. So for instance, if I go into a folder, let's, I don't have any files right now, so this doesn't help much, but if I go into desktop, for instance, and do a search, right now, if I type something in, let's say food, a file name with food, it will start searching this Mac first and not the, just the desktop folder. For me, I just want to search the folder that I am at. And this is really useful for pros, especially if you're just trying to find this one file in this folder and you're not sure if it's there or not, is a great tool to use for auditing. So what I would do is change when performing a search to search current folder only. And the thing is that if you do a search and is searching this folder only, you always have the option to expand the criteria to include everything on this Mac, which is a very useful feature. So I like to start out small and then expand later if I need to, rather than start out big and then kind of drill down to the folder. It just saves me more time that way. So beyond the preferences, there are a few more tweaks that I would do to the system so that it looks exactly the way how I want it to every single time. And this is something I do it on all of my computers. You can certainly choose to do this too, or just pick what is useful out of this list. Starting out, I would right click on the desktop and click on view options or show view options. And under sort by, what I would do is have this snap to grid. So without snap to grid, for instance, if I drag a file, it can just be offset like that and it's okay. Personally, I like things to line up perfectly. So what I usually do is click on snap to grid. And the moment you move things around, it will automatically line it up in that grid format. So with the grid, you can certainly go in and change the icon size if it's too big or small. I kind of like them a little bit smaller and I also like a little bit space or a little bit less space between them. You can do that and you can certainly choose. At some point, it's going to really cut off the text, so I'll make it about like that much. You can change the text size. You can have the text showing up on the bottom or the right. A lot of times I have it on the right, and I also click on show info. So this is giving me a heads up view every time I look on the desktop, and I can see how much space I have on this SSD hard drive and how much space I have left in it. So this is extremely helpful to me, and it also is helpful too when you plug in multiple memory cards. You can identify very easily by how much space remains free because sometimes they show up as the same name. So this is something that I find useful when dealing with a lot of movable medias and everything. The other thing what I'm gonna to do too is double click on my SSD that I have linked up to the system. And I never really like this view because it's not that helpful. I like to go command two or go to this list view and it just shows me everything. Right now you will notice something is that it's giving me all of the file sizes on the side here, including the folder file size too, which is really good. And I like to know how big these folders are and it's really useful information. So to do that, what I usually do is press Command J, and this is going to show me the view option again. And this view option, we have already set one up for the desktop, but this is slightly different. This is almost a per folder thing. You can see right now that you can go in and add, for example, date created. You can see that changing in the background. But the one thing that I want to add at this point is calculate all file size. And usually what I do is check this and say use as default. So this is going to be the default for this drive. And you can certainly, for instance, go in Let's find some files that we have on the system, which we don't have any, but I'll go into this drive, for example, application, and you can see that it's showing me the size for all the files. If I go Command J again, because I have calculate all size as default, I can now see how big each of the items are, which is crucial, especially if you're running out of space in your system, so you can do a quick audit at a glance how much space you're using on all these. So this has pretty much been the system setting that I would go change. It doesn't take that long to really go through and make all these changes, but it's something that I do on all of my Macs that I use. In fact, I do this on many of my client machines too that I consult for just because it really makes my life that much easier when I have to help them clean up the machine or remove some files or move things over to gauge how long it's going to take, to gauge how big that is or why their computer is full for no apparent reason because they don't see that files on their desktop, for instance. Anyway, I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.